In this video, I'm going to show you a little bit, uh, maybe some more advanced uh, techniques to use the dataset tools library with. Um, so I'm going to sort of walk you through a process I recently did um, to get some floral crops out of my images, and I'll just sort of talk you through how I would approach this. So <clears throat> first thing first, let's find a data set. Uh, this happens to be a data set of florals I use. Um, so these are uh, just a couple images from a data set that I like to use. Um, if we look at the size of these, you'll see these are pretty big images, right? So uh, 4,700 pixels tall is pretty great. We can use this. Um, so I'm going to talk about like how I would actually use, like maybe get some crops out of this. So the first thing I would do is let's open this in Photoshop. So let's say I want to do style again, and I want uh, square crops. So let's just say a fixed size of 1024 by 1024. And you'll see, like, you could do a bunch of different little patches out of this, right? So let's think about how we would actually want to do this. So uh, if I come back to my um, my terminal here, and I'm going to go into CD Dataset Tools. Let's look at uh, what's available here. So the first thing I want to do is I just want to get this set up. So let's use Python dataset tools.py. Let's pick up our input folder. So that is not that one, not that one. Looks like I lost it. Let's find it again real quick. Um, there's some downloads, ladies magazine, this one. So we're going to paste this in as the input folder. The output folder will be dot slash output slash ladies crop. And let's say center. So let's start with a center crop. Um, so the process type we're going to use is crop. And uh, crop can take in a bunch of different parameters. So if I look over here, there's a height, there's a width. Shift Y, Shift X. So let's start with just, let's just do a purely center crop. So I want a height of 1024 and a width of 1024. So by default, crop picks right from the center. So let's just run this and see what we get. And if I come here and I go to this, Ladies crop center. So if I look at these, see that I'm getting some perfectly centered crops, right? And that's going to take a little while to run on those 10 images because they're pretty big. Cool. So now let's think about like, okay, so I've got a center crop of all these images, right? So let's just say, you know, it found the perfect center in here, just somewhere over there. If Photoshop will line up right. That's kind of whatever. Uh, you know the idea. So it basically did a center crop of this. So now let's say I want to take a crop that is directly this but below. So the way I might do that is I will uh, run this command again. But I'll, let's just say center, and then I usually name these like bottom, left, right. So let's just say bottom. Um, so the next thing that we're going to look at is we're going to look at Shift Y. So Shift Y, uh, you put in a pixel amount, and it will go up or down depending on what you're using. So let's say um, we want to do shift Y, and we want it to go down 1024 pixels. So the way to have it go down is to actually do uh, positive. Negative will move it up. So um, the way to think about that is if you are starting in the center and you want to move down, you move down by adding 1024 pixels, right? If you want to move up, you subtract. So let's just run this. And if I come back to my folder here, you'll see the center bottom. You'll see that now we have different crops. So if we look at zero and zero here, these will match up. And you could bring these into Photoshop and actually restitch them together. Not really recommended, but you could do it. Okay, so now we could do this for top by doing negative. Um, and then we could do left and right by using the shift X command, right? 
So I'm actually going to stop this. Let's look at, uh, let's do left. Um, so similarly, um, we can do shift X. Uh, so left is negative and right is positive. Now I'm not actually sure how big is this image? 2898. So actually the problem is that I can't actually do three across. Um, that would be 3072 or something like that. So what I actually want to do here, instead of going all the way to the left, um, cause that's not actually gonna work. Let me just sort of shuffle it a little bit. Let's just say 800. Um, I think that'll work. Actually, let's just say 750 to be safe. Um, you'll get an error message here if it's actually out. So actually, let's just do, let me just show you what the error message will look like. If I shift this way too far left, you'll get a message here that'll say that you can't do this. Yep, so error crop settings are too much for this image. So if I run this again, and let's just shift this to 700. This should work just fine. images these are working okay so now I could combine these using right um, that would totally work uh, now the thing is when you're done with this you actually want them all uh, basically the way style again works is you're gonna need them all in the same folder right so actually let me do one more thing here really quickly another thing you could think about is if you want to augment your data set a little bit more is you could start to uh, play with shift X and shift Y together so let's say that I want to take uh, something kind of similar, kind of centered, but let's say I just want to like offset it a little bit more randomly. So one thing I could do is I could do Shift X, um, let's say negative 200, and then Shift Y, like let's say 120. So this is kind of just like it's centered, but it's like a little bit off center, and so you're going to get slightly different crops. So let me call this center um, off one, and it's just like so it's a little bit off center. Um, Obviously you can't do this to produce thousands upon thousands of images, but it's a nice way to augment your data set a little bit. So if you already have a thousand images and you just want to add a little bit more detail, like this is a nice way to do it. Um, this is sort of something that I pretty commonly do in my data sets is just like, it's a way to increase your data a little bit more, um, but know that it has to work with something like these crops. Um, so I'm going to do this one more time. I'm just going to let this run. Center off once. If I look at center, um, and I look at center here, and I look at each of these images. So zero to zero. So you can see they're like a little different, right? Um, this part of the flower is now here. So again, this is important for StyleGAN because StyleGAN just wants to know what is a potentially good use of an image or a potentially like where can flowers appear. Um, so this is a good usage of this sort of materials. Uh, now that it's done, um, the important thing to remember is that for StyleGAN, we need everything to be in one folder, right? We need every image um, to utilize the exact same, uh, well, basically you need everything in one folder so you can run the data set tool process on it. So one of the things I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna grab all of these images. And so I just want all these center images. And I'm gonna say new folder with selection. Um, and let's just say ladies crop combined. So now what I want to do is I want to get all these images, but rather than have them, like I don't want zero to always replace zero, right? So if it just pulls the names, um, that's going to become problematic. So one of the things you can do is you can combine all these by just, like I can't just like move them into a folder, right? Because if I move this folder, I move this into this and just say combine them all here, I have to rename everything, it's, it's kind of messy. So let's just do it using um, the data set tools. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here, I'm going to say up, um, now I'm gonna need to clean a lot of this out, right? So start back, let's actually start from scratch, input folder. So now I've got this combined folder. I'm gonna paste this here. Uh, let's say output is going to be dot slash, uh, output folder dot slash output slash um, ladies crop um, Let's just say style again too, just so I know what, what exactly this is for. Um, I'm gonna use resize or uh, process type resize. And then I'm gonna use a max size of 1024. Now what's important here is like, this actually won't do anything, right? 
it is already 1024 by 1024. So it's actually basically kind of skipping the process. Um, but what's helpful here is what I'm gonna do next. So this is basically saying, don't do anything with these images. But the next thing is I wanna say uh, numbered. So numbered uh, is actually, I realize now, not something listed here. But what numbered is gonna do is it's gonna give me a, it's gonna number all these images uh, in a sequence from zero all the way to whatever. Um, if you don't use numbered, it might actually just like keep replacing those images. So it's important to use this. And the last thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use file extension. Um, if you've been noticing, uh, up until now, everything has been a PNG. And it's good to use that because that's uh, uncompressed, meaning uh, no matter what you're doing, you're not like destroying the image anymore. If you were to set the file extension as JPEG as you're doing each of these steps, um, it's gonna get a little bit more compressed each time and it's gonna become a muddier image. So make sure you don't use this command until the very end. So you're gonna do file extension and you're gonna use JPEG. Uh, the reason you wanna do this is that PNG files are huge, right? This is a 3.2 megabyte uh, 1024 by 1024 image. Um, when you use JPEG, it's gonna be like far less than that. It's probably be about 500K. Um, now this is important because you wanna upload this to your uh, paper space machine and you need to upload it as quickly as possible. And if you have thousands upon thousands of PNGs, it's gonna be like gigabytes of images. Um, so this will use JPEG compression. It'll use the least compressible method possible. So your images will stay pretty good quality. Um, and in my experience, it generally still works fine with StyleGAN. Um, but this is just a little thing I've added to this library to, to have this work. So let's run this and just see what happens. And that was really quickly. That happened really quickly too. Right, so Lady, Ladies Crop Style again too, 1024 by 1024, and now you'll see every one of these images is numbered perfectly, um, and we have about 50 images here so far, and they're all PNGs, and they are th like not even 500K, they're 340K. So if I look at this folder, and the size of it is 18.1 megabytes, and I look at this folder, and the size is 164 megabytes. So this is gonna be way easier to upload um, either via FTP or something else through paper space. Um, this is a really nice technique. This is sort of my new, this is my current workflow for how I generate a lot of my files. Um, so now we've learned a little bit about how to use crops and we've learned a little bit about uh, some additional features here. They're numbered and file extension. Um, so now we're getting pretty good, like we've got a pretty good data set here. Um, so I might do a couple other videos, but for now, like I think this is pretty much set up and you've got a little bit of basics and you've got some advanced functionality as well. Um, any more questions, you can feel free to drop them in the YouTube channel or in Slack. Thanks.